What are the three keys to being a more effective leader? Um, okay, I'm just going to go on the fly here, but the, the, I think the first thing, first thing, probably the most important that um, we have found at Gallup over the years is just um, that a leader really knows his or her own strength, kind of like just like a carpenter needs to know the tools that are at uh, their disposal. So knowing who you are and how you can in a lot of cases be even more of who you are would be the first one. Um, what, and to add to that a little bit, we found that um, the best leaders are not well-rounded, so they're not trying to be a little bit good at everything. They focus on being great at a few things where they have real natural talent, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that because uh, the best leaders really know um, who they are, they're good at surrounding themselves with the right people who um, complement their strengths. So instead of finding people who look just like themselves or clones, which can lead to kind of a negative groupthink in a lot of cases, they're real smart to find people who can be even better than they are in a lot of different areas and to build that team around themselves. So if you're thinking about it at a real functional and foundational level, what do leaders need to do? First thing is to make sure they know a lot about what they're good at and what they're not good at. And the second thing would be to um, get the right team around themselves. And the third thing there are... Um, in the book, Strength-Based Leadership, we get into some of the more tactical things that followers say they really need from leaders, but um, the, I, I'll let me just pick one of those four things, that, um, which I think poses the greatest challenge, is leaders really do need to um, not only help followers to have a kind of stability in what's going on in the moment, but to also hold out a lot of hope for the future. So the, I think the third challenge for leaders is to balance those two and help people know that um, things are stable right now and even if times are tough right now that, that we'll get through it together and that there will be a better future tomorrow. So that's probably the, kind of a more long-term challenge for leaders. So how can people position themselves so they are in a job that they love? How can they position themselves so they are in a job that they love? Yeah, not just a job that pays the bills and that they hate going to and they're working for the weekend. You know, I, I, I've been kind of amazed by this. We asked we ask a question on some of our uh, poll guys and looking at some data from, I think it was about uh, 30,000 people we polled recently in the last month or two. And um, only 24% of people in this data set I'm looking at uh, say that they like what they do each day. Ooh. So you've got, you've got about three quarters that, I mean, it's, it gets kind of hard for me to imagine because I get to know what I do on a day-to-day basis, but um, we just don't like what they do on a day-to-day basis. So the uh, real foundational level, people need to step back and look at the things where they kind of experience that natural satisfaction and enjoyment and what uh, one psychologist we work with, a real sharp guy named Mihai, Chief of Mihai, would call flow. He wrote a real good book on flow that's kind of an optimal state when you're doing something that you're so wrapped up in it, you kind of lose track of time. Um, so what are, what are the moments where you experience that, and how can you spend even more time during the day doing those things? And then um, a more, and more, it's probably a more self-serving comment, but um, we've got an assessment called Strengths Finder that people can take that is... Uh, I think it takes about a half hour, but it's real diagnostic about what specific talents you have. And a lot of people have reported that when they go through that and start to connect some of those natural talents to the things that they need to get done in a job, it helps them to be more effective uh, without having to make a big life or career change or say, I'm in the totally wrong line of business. Sometimes it's just about small adjustments to what you're doing each day. Out of all the Gallup studies you've conducted or Gallup's conducted, what is the most fascinating piece of research that has caught your eye? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, we've read a lot of stuff that we're probably, we'll publish next year where we've been studying what the key drivers of an individual's well-being are across a lifetime from their finances to their physical health and their social relationships and their careers. So there's, there's a lot of stuff in there, but that's um, probably too much to get into right now. Well, let me, if I go back to, um, I'm, 
and I, this isn't even Gallup research, but when I look back across all the um, kind of books I've been involved with over the years, um, I'd say one of the best studies, and this was conducted by a um, guy named John Gottman and started it off in 1992, I believe. Um, I think it was the University of Washington at the time. But he was looking at the importance of those little day-to-day -day interactions that people have and how that impacts long-term outcomes. So if you're just passing someone at work and having a conversation or uh, you and your spouse are sitting around in the evening talking, how do those little exchanges predict long-term outcomes? And um, the, it's, the, it's the way Gottman tested this little theory he had that still impresses me as much as any experiment I've followed. Um, he brought in 700 newlywed couples into his lab and just watched them interact for 15 minutes. And then based on those little interactions, if they had more than five positives for every one negative in those remarks they made to each other, he predicted they'd stay together. If they were below that five to one long line, Gottman predicted they'd divorce. And then 10 years later, he followed up with these 700 couples to see how accurate his predictions were. And his predictions were accurate 94% of the time based on watching a 15-minute conversation. So that, um, while well, it wasn't a, kind of an original piece of Gallup research or anything, that sure got um, me and a lot of our other scientists, some of our senior scientists who are in the academic world as well, interested in how can we measure those ratios in the workplace. And it, it helps you to see how those little day-to-day -day things with human behavior can um, have a pretty profound impact on everything from marriage to productivity among work teams.